Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to simplify a trigonometric expression by using factoring. Factoring, 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 what everybody like cringes if they remember factoring, you know, in their algebra two and algebra one. Uh, it's a skill that, you know, takes a lot of practice. So if it's something that is something that you haven't practiced or you haven't seen in a while, make sure you brush up on some of your old factoring spills, you know, with quadratics or polynomials um, to really, to really uh, do very well. Um, or to have this all polished up. Because basically all we're doing is we're applying our factoring skills that we should have um, with trigonometric expressions, all right? Now, if you get stumped, what I recommend is rewriting these expressions with numbers and variables. So it looks like a polynomial or a quadratic or whatever it may be. So for instance, we have sine squared of x times cosecant squared of x minus sine squared of x. Now again, remember when we're simplifying, we're trying to get this down to one single term, uh, one single expression, uh, trigonometric expression, um, or down to a single number. So you can see here, they're separated by subtraction here. So I, I want to be able to see how can I simplify this. And you might not be able to look at this and say, well, how can factoring come into this? Well, if if you're having trouble with this, basically what I like to do is, again, as I mentioned, is let's rewrite this. Forget, let's just replace sine squared with a 3, and sine squared of x with 3. Cosecant squared, let's just replace that as an x minus 3. Hopefully, if I was going to say, hey, can you factor out 3x minus 3, what can you factor out? Remember, when we're factoring. What we're trying to do is identify what our two terms have in common? Well, 3x and negative 3 both have in common a 3. So factoring out, what we're basically doing is we're dividing out the 3. So when I divide out the 3, basically I divide each of these terms by 3, I'm left with an x minus 1. 3 times x minus 1 is the factored form of 3x minus 3. Or 3 times x minus 1 is the factored form of 3x minus 3. What I've done is I've rewritten the problem, rewritten the expression as a product. Now it's 3 times x minus 1. Um, rather than 3x minus 3. So exactly the same, just another way to rewrite it. So again, for all of these problems, um, I would always recommend, again, looking into rewriting them as, you know, and actually I'll do that for each problem probably. Rewrite them as just saying, and you can pick arbitrary. Why'd you get 3? I just picked 3. You can pick y. You can pick 10. It doesn't matter. I was just trying to show you that, you know, pick easy numbers and easy variables, um, but just showing you how, remembering your own factoring skills. So if we look at this, well, these two expressions, what do they have in common? Well, you can see that they both have in common a sine squared. So if I factor out a sine squared of x, I'm left with, if I factor out a sine squared of x here, I'm left with a cosecant squared of x. If I factor a sine squared of here, I'm left with a negative 1. Now, before you say, all right, well, that's done. I factored it out. But it's not just factoring. We're actually factoring and simplifying. So whenever you see squares, always think of your Pythagorean identities, OK? And I don't really want to convert sine squared um, to, to using this Pythagorean identity. But I want to be able to see, can I rewrite cosecant squared of x minus 1? Can I rewrite that as one single um, term using my Pythagorean identities? And yes, by using my Pythagorean identities, I can rewrite this as cotangent. So sine squared of x. Now this is rewritten as cotangent squared of x. It's this equals cotangent squared of x. Now, to simplify this, I just rewrite them using my um, rewrite them in terms of sines and cosines. So I have sine squared of x over 1 times cotangent is cosine squared of x over sine squared of x. Well, now you can see that my sines divide to 1, and I'm just left with a cosine squared of x. To the next example, it's basically the exact same thing, um, except now we're just using a little bit different. Uh, a little bit different uh, trigonometric functions. You can see here that they both share a secant. So I'm going to factor out a secant of x. When doing that, I'm left with 1 minus sine squared of x. Now, this one's a little bit different. Um, I can't convert this. I can rewrite that in terms of sines and cosines. But I see here, again, another opportunity for a Pythagorean identity. So 1 minus sine squared of x by using my Pythagorean identities is actually equal to cosine squared. So I have secant of x times cosine squared of x. Now, I'll just rewrite this in terms of sines and cosines, which is just 1 over cosine over cosine squared of x over 1. Cosine, cosine divides into cosine squared of x. That now just becomes 1. So I'm left with, again, cosine of x. All right, so for the next example, um, this one gets a lot of students. And I was thinking about using an easier one, um, <laughs> but 
Um, I think the best thing to look at this is, again, going back to your polynomials. Let's forget about cosines for a second. Let's think of this as something we would see in polynomials. If I had this 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth, well, first of all, when we're factoring polynomials, we always want to make sure it's in descending order. So if I rewrote this, it would be x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. Now, to go ahead and factor that, a lot of you still might say, I don't know how to factor a polynomial to the fourth power. Well, polynomials to the second power with quadratics was the one that was most commonly factored. So what we could do is always replace the 4 with a 2 and replace the 2 with a 1. So that means it would be x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now, hopefully, you guys remember how to factor when we have a quadratic in this format. When you have a quadratic in this format, basically, again, what we're trying to do is identify what two numbers multiply to give you 1, but then add to give you uh, negative, two, uh, negative 2. Well, this can be factored into x minus uh, 1 times x minus 1. Now, if I was to go back and actually factor it for there, x times x gives you x squared. But in reality, we're really trying to get it to be x to the fourth. So I would just replace my x's with x squareds. Um, and then this would be the factored form of that, right? And really, this is x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 1, which is really x squared minus 1 squared. Okay. So let's go ahead and use this thinking to help us solve this or simplify this. So the first thing I'm going to do here is rewrite this in descending order. So I have cosine to the fourth x minus 2 cosine squared of x plus 1. Now again, we're trying to factor this two factors. Okay. Now again, we need to have our two factors that are going to multiply to give us 1, but then add to give us negative 2. Well, going back from what I just factored, we know that those two numbers have to be negative 1 and negative 1. And then we want the same to be cosine um, to the fourth what two terms are going to give us cosine to the fourth, but then add to give us our cosine squared? Well, that's going to be cosine squared of x times cosine squared of x. So now I have factored it. And remember, cosine squared of x minus 1 times cosine squared of x minus 1. We can simplify that to cosine squared of x minus 1 squared. Now, we want to look to our Pythagorean identities. Um, So, so when looking into Pythagorean identities, we know sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1, right? So cosine squared minus 1, so we have sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if I subtract the sine and subtract the 1, this actually equals negative sine squared of x squared. Well, if you multiply this by itself, if you square negative sine squared, I end up with a positive sine to the fourth power to the x. And that's going to be your final answer. Um, over here, I have secant of fourth minus tangent of the fourth. And again, this one just gets to this because you've got to go back and remember, oh my god, how did I factor things to the fourth power? Well, in here, we have the fourth power. But here, we had three terms. Now we have two terms. And if you remember when factoring, we always factored stuff with two terms. We used the difference of two squares. So for instance, what if this was? X, uh, let's do yeah, x squared minus y squared. Well, or, or let's do the one that we did for here. Forget about the force for a second. Let's rewrite this as a squared minus b squared. Well, hopefully you remember that the factor form of this is a minus b times a plus b, right? Because a times a is a squared. Negative b times b is negative b squared, where the middle terms cancel out. So if I had a to the fourth minus b to the fourth, well, now, instead of multiplying to give me a squared, they need to multiply to give me a to the fourth. So it's going to be a squared minus b squared times a squared plus b squared. And it's going to be exactly your same point here. So now, we're just going to use that thinking to factor with secants and tangents. So therefore, I'll have secant squared of x minus tangent squared of x times secant squared of x plus tangent squared of x. I'm kind of getting into my other form here. Um, so now we're going through this. We want to be able to kind of simplify this. So we want to get everything in the same terms, right? Um, in terms of the same uh, thing. So we have squared, so we know we can use our Pythagorean identities. And the best thing what I would do is I would replace all of, we could either replace all your secants with tangents, because those are a part of the same Pythagorean identity, or replace all of your um, tangents with secants. I would, rec I would um, recommend to replace all of your secants with in terms of tangent. 
So therefore, by using my Pythagorean identity, secant squared is going to be 1 plus tangent squared of x minus tangent squared of x times 1 plus tangent squared of x plus tangent squared of x. Now you can see tangent squared of x minus tangent squared of x. Those divide to 1, so you're left with 1. And then here, tangent squared of x plus tangent squared of x is going to leave us with 1. Oops. So I have 1 okay, times 1 plus 2 tangent squared of x. And you, know, you don't really need parentheses. So that's all going to be multiplied by 1, so that's going to be left there. And there you go. That's going to be your final answer. Unfortunately, we can't really simplify this down to one single expression. That's really going to be um, basically because that 2 prevents us from using the Pythagorean identity again. So I can't rewrite that in terms of secant. It's just going to be um, simplified as 1 plus 2 tangent of x. The next example, again, I see cosine, cosine squared of x minus 4. Again, look into your difference of two squares. Can I rewrite you know, a square? Think of this as like this x squared minus 4. Instead of cosine, think of it as x squared minus 4. Well, difference of two squares would tell you x minus 2 times x plus 2. And now we're going to do the exact same thing, but now we're going to use cosines. So it's going to be cosine of x minus 2 times cosine of x plus 2 divided by cosine of x minus 2. Well, you can see that these are exactly the same expressions. One is in the numerator, one's in the denominator. They are, the terms are all separated by multiplication, so I can divide those across. And I'm just left with an, an expression, cosine of x plus 2. I know it's not one single term, again, like the other problem, but there it is. Um, the last factoring technique you need to know, so we covered factoring trinomials. We factored covering binomials. Um, we factored covering binomials by difference of two squares. And I did another example of them. So what happens when we have more than three terms, and, but we still need to factor something? Well, the other term that you guys remember in, um, from Algebra 2 is factoring by grouping. And basically, factoring by grouping, what we're simply going to do is group the first two terms and then group the last two terms. Then from there, we're going to factor out common terms um, from each group. Well, between secant cubed of x and negative secant squared of x, I can factor out a secant squared of x. And what that's going to leave me with is a secant of x minus 1. Then over here, I want this to look exactly the same as this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out a 1. That's going to leave me with a secant of x plus 1. Now you can see that secant of x minus 1 and secant of x minus 1 are exactly the same of this whole expression. So I'm going to factor out those two expressions, and I'm left with secant of x minus 1. And then what's left over is secant of squared minus 1. Now, by using my Pythagorean identities, um, secant squared minus 1 is going to be the same thing as tangent. So I have secant of x minus 1 is tangent squared, sorry, times tangent squared of x. OK, now you can look into distributing this. But what happens is it's not really going to make it any simpler because secant is 1 over cosine. Tangent is sine squared over cosine squared. So the cosines are going to be in the denominator. It's just going to give us cosine cubed in the bottom. It's not really going to make anything simple. So therefore, oops, I forgot to circle these. So therefore, that would be your simplified version by using factoring. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you simplify trigonometric expressions using factoring. Thanks.